speak about just a few of the strategies used at classroom level to engage our HAP learners. It's also important to note that HAP learners are not just the pupils we find in top sets. They are pupils who may be considered gifted or talented in a variety of areas. Here at St John Fisher, we believe that supporting all of our pupils and meeting their individual needs is incredibly important. Part of this, therefore, involves looking at ways that we can support our most able learners. Hi there, I'm Mr Marsh and I've recently taken the role of the uh, Aspirations and Interventions Coordinator here at St John Fisher. Uh, the focus of the role is to develop uh, an aspirational ethos and learning culture across the school. The role has three main elements to it. Firstly, it's to develop knowledge and understanding of current research initiatives, uh, theory and best practice in stretching and challenging our high achieving pupils. Uh, secondly, it's to help promote study skills across the school and then therefore develop a culture of delivering effective revision. Um, over time, this should enable you know, our learners to recall knowledge in an effective and appropriate way. And then therefore that should then help them you know, significantly with their, their exams in year 11. Thirdly, it's also to lead and monitor the school's intervention strategy. Uh, this is by implementing some new systems which aim to identify, track and then therefore review a student's progress. Uh, with this in place, we can therefore target intervention where it will be most effective in the school and then therefore improve the outcomes for all of our pupils. One strategy used for HAP pupils is connecting the dots or tube lines. For this exercise, we would give pupils a blank tube map, placing a concept at one or both ends. Pupils would connect the dots or stations, being able to clearly explain connections between each one. So, what's the benefit of this? This challenges pupils to think deeply and form connections between concepts. Well in history we've got this thing called read, watch, do and what that does is the teacher makes us read around the subject so books that are linked to the subject so for example right now we're doing Weimar and Nazi Germany so about that and then watch something related to the subject and then for do is where we visit a place so for example in Germany. A further strategy often utilised in the classroom for half learners is encouraging critical thinking skills. Critical thinking skills go beyond facts and recall and they encourage pupils to think a little deeper and outside the box a little more. Discussion-based tasks can prove excellent for critical thinking. Something as simple as having an image on the board of a hot air balloon and asking pupils what they would do if it was going down. Half pupils can sometimes fear getting the answer wrong, so encouraging them in this way shows pupils that really there is no right or wrong answer. Curriculum leaders always make sure there's sufficient extension tasks put into each lesson and challenge questions as well. Um, we ensure that differentiated activities are commonly utilised to target all of our HAP pupils uh, and we use high order questioning as well to promote a deeper understanding of new ideas and concepts. I feel like I'm placed with other high achieving pupils which means that we can bounce ideas off each other meaning that we gain more knowledge and like we can use that in our exams. Assessments are made to be challenging um, and some departments you know, use extended versions of assessments to really push our key stage three pupils uh, even further. Um, and also we give the opportunity for some of those pupils to be leaders in group activity to, to practice their oracy and delegation and leadership skills. And we have a, a really appealing reward system as well that ensures that you know, any exemplary work that pupils produce is celebrated and rewarded as well. HAP pupils are encouraged to participate in a range of events and competitions uh, aimed at raising aspirations across the school. Uh, we liaise with six form colleges such as St John Rigby um, to aspire our pupils to take A-levels and then go on to hopefully university. There have been many trips for students who are higher achieving to go to colleges and universities and this helps the students to realise what they have to do. I've been to St John Rigby and I've also been to Wigan and Lee College for a sociology um, trip and it helped me to realise what subjects I could do there potentially and see what life could be like in college. Through an individual departments, there are a range of different internal and external enrichment programmes that are in place so far. So for example, English run the Power of Poetry competition uh, for our Key Stage 3 pupils which has been really popular this year. Uh, in maths, numerous pupils have been involved in the Vex Robotic competition uh, which is used to promote STEM skills. And Key Stage 4 pupils are also given the opportunity to explore further maths and statistics. In last year I had two GCSEs that were offered for extra, for high ability pupils, extracurricular. So I did statistics and I got a 9 in that. And then also this year I'm doing further maths which very little schools in the country do now. Uh, and I hope to do good in that one as well. 
Uh, last year we had multiple hat pupils compete in the Archdiocese Public Speaking Competition and we had a fantastic third place in that which was great. Uh, our Performing Arts Department have supported our pupils as well in gaining access to funded summer school places uh, through LIPA and through the Musical Youth Theatre. In French they bring children to France to further develop their language skills and they also in geography bring students to Iceland which is a place that you would never think school to bring children to which further excites them and like helps them want to know more about the subject and encourage them to learn that subject much more. They bring in career workshops which allow students to go around and see what colleges and universities and careers that they want to do in the future and they also have in assemblies they bring in different colleges to have further detailed descriptions of what the them colleges offer their schools. We've had professionals come in to give us talks for example Tom Rogers has come in who's from Oxford University who's reading history. Well I've been here four years and then I was mainly in set one for most of the year so I know how it is to be a high ability pupil and the teachers, they really push me to do the best I can. I feel like St John Fisher has given me such a great experience. I feel like because of my friends and the ways that teachers have made lessons so fun and engaging and I feel like when I leave school I will always remember St John Fisher. But I said to them, you know, I've, I'm living proof that uh, going to Oxford isn't just a great, you know, process of going up. There's things that go wrong, things that you need to change, but you ultimately better yourself for educational purposes. 